What's up, StarCraft fans? Today we're doing the tier list for Never Say Die on Missed Opportunities. Brian, let's hear the mutation. Missed Opportunities is the map where we have to clear out Erezine geysers for Stetman's bots to harvest. Then we have to protect said bots from enemies. If we lose more than one bot on brutal difficulty, we lose the game. Enemies steal of life steals, revive, and a one-time 100 health shield that activates when they first take damage. Alright, so Tutu and Herman are in the call order today. Or today, how are you guys today? Alright. Great. Fantastic. So, Herman, how are we going to rank the commanders this week? So basically, these three mutators all strengthen the enemy. So the enemy will be really tanky and chunky. Yes. And, um, so there's barrier plus just dies. So every unit and structures will trigger barrier no matter what. Yes. Um, and there's life leech. Um, so uh, commanders can kill wave really fast. Will be in a high tier. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, there's this map. You know, in the early game, there will be a lot of attack wave coming, especially during the second set of boss. There will be like four four attack waves coming in like two minutes um so that's the hardest part and the force the fourth set of bots is a, is another hardest part. If you can pass these two rounds, um, it won't be that difficult. Perfect. How about you, Tutu? Um, so commanders with high burst damage will do well because if you want to, if you fight for a long time, they will drain a lot of life back, especially if they hit hard like immortals. So yeah, commanders who can hit really hard, really fast will do much better. So it's all about damage others. output this week. Let's begin. Abathur. Yes, yes. Abathur, where do we have him? Um, Abathur, so there's Just Die, which makes the early game a little more difficult. Fortunately, there isn't a laser drill to stop you, so you can still farm stuff. It just takes longer to get the first Brutalisk. For, and um, later on, Toxic Nests are really good because the enemies will just walk over them and die. At least they'll lose one of their lives. So it's actually not that bad. Um, immortals, though, if you if you do get Immortals and they get like a second life, they, they, really, hurt, uh, they really hurt the... Uh, Brutalist, so make sure you have like queens and or vipers, vipers later on. Yeah, I uh, I just put him in B. Hmm. How about you, Herman? Mostly because I just died. Yeah, um, I also put him in B tier. I just think he just relies on the enemy AA composition. So if the enemy is like ground, uh, your wife will be really good because you can just don't let them attack. Um, but there, if there are errors, so um, you probably need devolvers and uh, or or you can also use um, ravagers if you like. Um, you just cannot disarm the enemy if they are air units. True. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just AI dependent a little bit. And the early game needs some time to set up for the uh, for your first produce. Yeah, that's it. All right, Also cool. B tier. Third prestige, you're probably a lot lower. Probably like D tier or something. If you're first prestige, maybe C tier. Third prestige, probably D tier. Let's move on. Alarak, where do we have him? So Iraq have uh, has um, ascendance, which is really good on this map, and just basically really a really good unit. Uh, it has a lot of DPS, um, and uh, you just uh, he can kill wave really fast, uh, especially during uh, empower me time. Um, so like you you can get you can get um like sixteen ascendance, and then like get some fast workers if you like. Uh, I would say he can be S tier. How about you, Tutu? I don't think he's S just because it's hard like if you don't get to the point where you get 16 ascendants he's not gonna roll like he, he'll do fine but he doesn't roll over this mutation so uh yeah i, I put him in a though because he's really strong and i i think using p2 might not be so bad actually because yeah, you get P2 like is a lot that bad. Yes, yes. For, for this one because you need a lot of power and empower me will allow you uh p2 will allow you to use empower me even like perhaps even twice in the same set of bots so herman are you gonna make a case for s well, I can see why he can't be as for now. Because like if the AI is like uh virtuous or like really tanky early game, you probably like don't have that much DPS in early game and it didn't kill him that fast before you get six years in this. Uh yeah, um that's true. I, okay, I can see why he's in A tier. Alright, A is fine. Let's move on. Arcturus, where do we have him? 
So this he's interesting because he does a lot of DPS, but if you don't have enough of them, you're gonna lose your units because their barrier is really annoying, and uh, you're gonna probably want a few fire bats to so that you can trigger the barrier and then run so that the barrier expires, then fight them. There's only one barrier, even though there's just die. Mm -hmm. um, so you're gonna yes, have to yes. move around a lot, or if you can, if you're fighting like Zerg or something, you can try to put those buildings in front of your bunkers so that they can't get surrounded as quickly. But depending on the enemy comp, he might have some trouble like maintaining a large army supply uh, because he takes a lot of damage. Uh, if you don't control well or if you like lose too many early on or for whatever reason. Uh, so I put him in B. All right. How about you, Herman? Okay, um, I'm not sure if we should use Yeso in uh, for Mace in this mutation. I, I think we, we still need Yeso's, right? I use them. Yeah. Um, just a few. Like, we can't just use all, like, all Marines to, to, to pass this mutation. Uh, yeah, that's really bad. Yeah, I just think uh, he needs a lot of time to set up uh, ESOs. Um, and uh, like early game, like you need, you just need something in early game, but especially during like eight to ten minutes. Like uh, the second set, is, uh, yeah, the sec yeah, a lot of bunkers. Mm, yeah, like you, you just need a balance. Like uh, you have enough bunker, in, like uh, at the front top, at the front line, and you and you still need to building ESOs um, in your base or like at some positions. Um, yeah. I think he he is a B tier. All right. This one. Would that prestige still be? Mm, lower. Uh, lower B. All right. I I don't think yeah I don't think he will be high B anymore if there is no prestige. Artanis, where do we have him? Well, um, Artanis like um he really depends on the enemy air composition. Um, I'm thinking we should use P3 for this one um, because the the big archon is just really good uh, for early game. What and, I said. Uh, yeah, like if there are a lot of links coming and they have barriers um, and they revive, if you're not P3, you know, you only have five orbital strike and how can I deal with like 50 links like as a, as a second set of boss? So I think P3 is a requirement for our planet here. T2 um, said to use storms. Lots of storms. Also, bubble marketing, I believe. Both of them said storms. I was like, okay, but I'll go with. Not if there's Zerg. If there's Zerg, you, you can't get, you won't survive to storm. You won't yeah, survive the storm. <laughs> so what do you do if yeah, you're Zerg? You just die. die? Yeah, you just die. You just die. So if you're not P3, you're gonna die. <laughs> okay, so yeah, letter. Just die. Yeah, just die. Letter. Uh, I think he is like a D tier for this one. How about you, Tutu? Um, so he's he's not completely useless. He, he just does, yes. doesn't he's do very completely. much. He just doesn't do very much. Um, that's because Artanis, unless you're using storms, you're fighting based on attrition and you're you're trying to like outlast them. But with life leech and just die, they last quite a long time and you might Man. suffer losses because of that. So if you're if the plan is to outlast them, it's not a good plan, but it might be your only choice. So it kind of sucks. Uh, if you're going to go the storm P1 storm route, then you have to hope the AI is not a strong one or you need someone to help you in the early game for, yes. somehow. You have to survive somehow oh. earlier on. Uh, I also put Artanis in D. All right. Uh, I just want to say about uh, two more things. So if uh, so, shield overcharge can uh, can let life leech not trigger. So that's that's like pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, another point is that if there are immortals or like siege tanks, you might want to use Phoenix. Okay. Yeah. I actually yeah. had Artanis in E, but D is fine. Without yeah. prestige, still D. Yeah. Okay. The Haka. Where do we have him? The Haka. Um early game you have to eat them twice but i don't think that's a huge deal um later on once you have p2 pack leaders i don't think the enemy will will be any trouble at all by the time you get to like where you have to be in different parts of the map it's you you should have an army as well so you'll be fine i, I beat this uh random classic mech against random classic mech and it was fine yeah. mass mutilus yeah so i i think he's like really doesn't really matter if you can fight like something strong at three minutes and still Be do fine. well i think yeah I, I put him in s oh yeah how about you herman 
Yeah, I think the Hava deserves an S for here. Nice S, the Hava. Mm, yeah, and uh, I'm not sure if if we are like what unit we should use. I mean, Mutalex is fine in my mind. Um, yeah, should be but, fine. What about like Tyrannus or? or I think Tyrannus or... will also be fine as long as you can get enough of them. If you don't attack them one at a time, you should be fine. Anyway, Phoenix, where do we have them? So Phoenix, like in my mind, is just also depends on the AI composition. If the AI is ground, your card artist is really good. Yeah, it deals like AOE damage and uh, high DPS. Um, but if there are air units, you you probably need um a lot of uh what's that called mojos. Yeah, mojos. A lot of uh, mojos. And uh, um, what's that? And uh, uh, colors, yes, that's like the uh, anti-air things for you in early game. Um, I'm I, I'm thinking probably we should use P1 here. Yeah, that, that's that's what I'm thinking right now. So well, I think P1 probably do better than P2 in this mutation. Why? I'm not that yeah. Um, I think he is like a B tier for this one. Why? Why? Why Akundalar? Um, it's just your uh, because a lot of the unit are are around like two hundred HP and uh, your dragoon suit can just like so you use you, you use Q and then you wait and then you use Q again to Q, to kill the enemy yeah, because they come in really fast during the second set of boss so I'm thinking probably P two is uh, P one is better but I'm not that sure. Yeah. How about you two two? Um. There are 19 enemy comps. I think he'll run over at least 15 of them. So they'll that's like lead up the, the heavy air comps are the ones that will give him tr a bit of trouble. And that's okay. where you'll need like if you're if you know you're fighting a heavy air comp, you'll probably want Oton cannons. I'm, uh, assuming you're using P2. Um so I use P2 and you just play normally, except uh if there's Add air, cannons. then you want more cannons sure. to okay. help out and more stargates and just like have excess mojos lying around and, and everything that can hit air, have extras just in case uh you can also use the arbiter and freeze some of them so you don't have to yeah. fight so many at the same time crowd control um it's great the stasis one yeah, yeah. so I, I put phoenix in a mm, okay that's interesting so herman are you gonna make a case for b or are you gonna change to a mm. I think you do I, have I a point get, in one I respect. Photon cannons. Photon cannons. Like you can, you can just build, build the photon photon cannons. <laughs> yeah, I think you have a point in in one good respect. It's that he he does he he doesn't rule over all the enemy compositions equally. Unlike Alarak there, who doesn't really care about the enemy composition. If you are Phoenix and you fight against the four enemy comps, the heavy air that you are weak to. Yes, it can can work, but. I'm not sure how well it will work. For example, if you have a Balkuzet revives and Yamato's twice, how long can your cadence realistically survive? Of course, if you're Tutu, you can you can survive and even replace them if any of them fall. I'm not sure if it's good enough for A. I'm on the fence between A and B, so I consider both points. I'm just not sure whether you think it's good enough for A. Uh, Yamato only exists in classic Mac for this map. There's only um, one. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, yes. it, yeah, only classic Mac has uh battle cruisers uh, in this map. Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, or, uh, maybe at the end, tier six. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's. But that's at the end. At the end, it doesn't matter. That's certainly really in the end. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Well, so yeah, I'm just not thinking about like how P1 works better than P2. I I I probably want to like disagree to myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think P2 is probably better here. So. So letter. I also. Uh, do you think he's A or are you gonna stick with B? I also, so so I want to add like Alarak, he's good against all comps, but Phoenix is easier and safer from the beginning against almost all the comps. That's also a good point. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. With Alarak, sometimes okay. the I, enemy I can just. See, I, I can see Phoenix in A. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What I was saying earlier is that Alarak is easier, especially if you have a bunch of as an anchor, but the weakness of that is if the enemy is immortal, sometimes they just run past. And just shoot the the bots down if you don't respond quickly enough. Which is why, even though Al Alarak is easier and he doesn't die from the comps, the bots could. So yeah. Yeah. Um. I think you you just need to split your army like in late game. Yes. Because you and have just pylons protect for overcharge. Yeah. Yeah. At least have something to like stall the enemy. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's for all commanders. Yeah. B or yeah, I yeah, see A, A is fine. Hot and yeah. Horner. Where do we have him? Han Horner. Um, so 
you need to do a lot of damage. Reapers can do a lot of damage, but they also die very fast. And if they die, they can't do damage. So very astute um, observation right there. Yeah. So if they're fighting against Terran, you can do invisible rates, but you don't you don't really know that beforehand. What you probably will do is you will uh, P1 hit enemies with strike fighters and mag mines before they get close and then fight them on their second life. And yeah, so you probably want to do that. And uh, if you don't trade well, you're if you don't get a death ball going, you're gonna struggle in the mid late game. So I, I put them in D. Ooh. How about you, Herman? Um, yeah, I just think uh, Hard Order isn't isn't that good for this mutation. Um, firstly, it's also is AI dependent. Um, so if they're air, your airstrike can only provide a vision. <laughs> yeah, and probably hit some Zilad or like uh devs. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that's true for the uh reapers. Yeah, you 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 should use reapers for this one if you want to deal a lot of damage. Um, uh, but they yeah, like what Tudu said, they die really fast. If yes, they do. Like yeah. Yeah, if you don't micro, if you just have two A and and they probably just die because they are they they only have like sixty HP, right? I I can't remember. I don't even know. So uh, <laughs> no. letter. Uh, also D tier, right? All right. Uh, I think yeah, I think Artanis P zero plus uh, or maybe not P zero. Artanis plus um hand order probably can be a like a, a commander composition probably. Yeah. All right, we'll talk about that later. For now, let's have yeah. hand and Horner in D. Karax, who do you have him? Well, Carex, oh, um, uh, there is just die and barrier. So, uh, your like your early game, uh, you probably you, you need to spend more energies, um, to uh, for the attack wave. Um, and uh, I, I just want to say that use your uh, use your solar lens well, um, mm. so that you can like solar lens is just really good, um, for the attack wave. So you just use one, and then they revive, and then you use use the second time, and, and you just wait 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 till the next time we're coming we're, um, we're, we're thinking about the second prestige you're right templar parent or are you gonna are you thinking third prestige um I, i'm thinking about the third prestige but p2 is also working in my mind yeah i, I actually think the default should be the second prestige because you want to hold the army in place and you're right you're absolutely right that with double life it will take you twice as much energy to kill them that's why i think if you if you have just the reviving zealots and cares that just don't lose that might be better but uh letter what, what do you have herman i think he is a beat here in my mind yeah how about you too so um he carax generally wins fights by surviving longer than them because you have repair beam or you use your solar lens and you kill them but with just die it takes more solar lenses to kill them takes more time to kill them and if they have a second life like they're immortals they will destroy your static defense yes uh Absolutely. Yeah, and they like yeah. if they you're like going leech. P2 carriers, it's I don't know how many carriers you can get by eight minutes, but that's when like you get Ooh. hit a lot. And I don't know if you can survive. You have a purifier beam, but that's true. I think you should use the beam to clear an area rather than attack fight an attack wave. I used P1 because Chrono is crack <laughs> and it saps everything everything disappears because it does a lot of damage. If you want to know how to go up, clear like clear areas with p1 on this map you can see what i did it's uh it's doable it's very doable uh, enemy comp dependent yes but it's doable and it's kind of fun uh but i don't think he's that good because in the beginning you also don't have a lot of energy since you haven't done you haven't done all your research and since eight to ten minutes is the most critical period when you're still like teching it's hard to get a strong army that's true and and a uh, good defense so i put him in c what do you think herman yeah i yeah i just think like just diet barrier and life leash um like you just kill the enemy really slow and uh, if you if you kill them slowly they will keep like uh, life leeching and uh, just you probably can't kill them if you don't spend enough energy for the burst damage oh uh, yeah that's true um yeah i can uh, yeah i think move him to c is okay for me okay i actually also had a yeah. b i, I my, my in uh my opinion is that if even if you don't have enough legionnaires or sentinels in the beginning at, or at eight minutes the first wave doesn't exactly arrive at 8 minutes. If I recall correctly, the first wave is more, is more like 8.20 and hits the bots at like 8.30. So you have a ha an, an extra half minute to get your stuff prepared. Plus, you can still sink your money into Zalots to kind of hold the enemy. 
and, and along with Solar Lands and Orbital Strike, you can kind of stall until carriers arrive, but point taken. C is fine for me as well. Kerrigan, where do we have him? Kerrigan is... Um, so she comes... If, if the enemy comp is fast, she will get hit before... Her base will get hit before she comes out. Yes. So if you know that there's Zerg, you want to build like sacrificial evolution chambers or something so that they can stall for you. Um, uh, but once Kerrigan comes out, she is a powerhouse. And especially with P2, you'll stun them. So if the enemy is stunned, they can't attack you. If they can't attack you, they can't, they they can't life reach. True. Yeah. So, yes. yeah. Um, however, I uh, having two lives is still a problem. Like, if you mismanage Kerrigan, or if you, like, go back to base to heal and you're slow, the enemies will be, like, all healed again. Or they'll attack the bots. Or they'll, like, kill your Mega Worms and you have no... no you'll be, like, further away from you'll be where stranded. you want to be. Yeah. Later on, you can add uh, Ultralis and Hydras. Kerrigan also has the uh, sucks against air problem. Yes. So if you're like fighting Banshees, oh my gosh, or Liberators, they have two lives and they just poke her and just like destroy her. So because of that, I put her in B, but she's pretty strong. I actually thought you'd put her lower, but uh, she, her air problems are really a pain, especially when you have reviving Ravens because <laughs> they hurt, they hurt a lot. Anyway, how about you, Herman? Um, I'm thinking already we should use Mutalex here. Yeah, that's why. That's why. That's why I I, I actually initially thought of being lower than C because my go-to for Kerrigan when against air comps is Mutalisks and just snipe the spellcasters. But with two lives of Ravens and science vessels and stuff, yeah, that's really bad. It'll be yeah. just gonna be extremely painful to try and micro Mutalisks. But please continue. So, uh, yeah, uh, my opinion is just that she doesn't have any, like literally any unit before ten minutes except Kerrigan herself. It's uh, usually enough, by the so, way. What? It's usually enough, by the way. Uh, yeah. Um, so if like if you're fighting against like uh like some like mutalix or just some air unit, you can build some uh small colors. That's totally fine. Uh, and uh, I just think you need to just micro your character really well. And if you're using P two, you want to just like manage your like how many times you attack and then you use a, an, an ability. Yes. Uh, make sure to count up to five attacks before you zap. It, yeah, and uh, I'm thinking, yeah, because we are using P2, so we are using the, uh, for the mastery, we should use the uh, last gas for units, right? Last gas for units. Yes, I think so, at least. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm thinking he, she probably should be a C tier in my mind. I think B tier is a little bit higher. Yeah, what do you think, Tutu? Are you going to make a case for C? Or uh, are you going to make a case for B? Or is C fine for you? Um, I watched my run. I used P1 because... Uh, but enemy comp dependent, but P1 is cool. Um, it took 11 shots to kill one oh, wow. Banshee. Because um, he kept Banshees do quite a lot of damage and they regen, they, they life leech. So it took 11 shots to kill two lives of a Banshee. Yikes. Uh, so no. that's, uh, Painful. yeah, imagine with more air, I guess, yeah, I can see. You can see? Why. <laughs> yeah, I can see why she's not as good as maybe I initially thought. Which is fine, you know? Uh, C is not terrible. It's meh. Kerrigan, C. All right. We can come to that agreement. Without prestige, still C. Yeah. She's not that different. Yeah. Sure. Nova, where do we have him? So, Nova has Sabreter and Ravens. Um, if, yeah, they just, they, they kill enemy really fast if they are wrong. Um, yes. And uh, if they're air unit, uh, you can add like one or two group of uh, Goliath if you want. Um, just like like for Nova, just that is kind of like not that fun because usually you use it's Griffin very Airstrike, not fun. yeah, and, and and like you use Griffin Airstrike and the enemy just disappear, but not for now. Uh, well, they just they are they are there. You need to kill them again. So yeah, that's not that fun. Um, uh, but uh, her defense drones is really good because it provides like a lot of shields, and uh, that shield can ignore life leech. So that's really good. And uh, you have you have Ravens, which means uh, turrets. Uh, they can tank a lot of damage, but uh, maybe they will life leech. But uh, you can kill them really fast uh, with your liberators. I think no one can be an A tier for this one for All this right. mutation. How about you, Tutu? Um, um, she has a similar problem to Phoenix where she doesn't do as well against air, but her anti-air is better than Phoenix's. And Liberator's yes, anti-air is still good. Plus you have Goliaths that can stun to help out. Um, plus you can make 
turrets with all that extra mon extra minerals that you're stuff you're floating. You can also air strike to get rid of one life, so you're kind of just fighting normally. Second like one, you get rid of one life with air strike, and then you liberator the rest. You can keep Nova in tank uh, in shotgun mode and hit the ground units while the liberators hit the air units or drop Raven turrets to deal with the ground. That works. Uh, I put her in A as well. All right. So I agree with everything you guys said. I agree with the tier, the reasoning. There's just one thing still gnawing at my mind. When I played this as Nova, I just instinctively went for Ravens and Liberators without scouting. And there's just one unit in particular that really makes it so painful for Nova. And that's Scourge. Because they have two lives. So you destroy one, and the second life just crashes your Liberators and then resets your Liberator. It is extremely painful. You have to be on point with your airstrikes every single wave so that you only have to fight one life of the Scourge. Or what I should have done is I should have honestly just scouted because it was devouring Scourge. It was a really easy comp. But I chose Liberators. I should have gone for Marines and Ghosts instead. If I had scouted mm. earlier, I would have gone for Marines and Liberators against devouring Scourge in particular because the Scourge are super painful to deal with using well. Liberators. Scourge don't come till like later. You can actually float a barracks. You don't use your barracks for anything anyways. So just have it lying around the bots and the Scourge will hit, hit the, the barracks. That's true. How many barracks can you have in the game? One, but you don't use it for anything. So you just float it. That's actually an interesting Plus strategy. That's actually an interesting strategy. Now that you mention it, instead of having your one barracks float around the map, if you're floating enough minerals for several airstrikes Beauty anyway command yeah i was thinking why not command, command centers, centers against yeah, that's cool. that's, uh, that's a great you guys actually that's a great point you can either yeah. scout which one i think i should have done or that's that's even better strategy if i know that scourge are coming and i don't scout them in advance and they've already chosen starport tech i think another thing i could have done is just forward command centers plural to just absorb the scourge that's i that's I something the, i also should have done yeah i think the ai we should worry about is the uh baiting scourge so that that's that's yeah that's like, true that's true but in my game right. in my game in particular i got devouring scourge which is normally a really easy enemy comp but if you don't uh, if you don't take yeah. if you don't take care of your no liberators problem. it's really I painful when the scourge crash into your liberators yeah you can absolutely and i should should have floated multiple command centers in front of my liberators Oh well, it's done. Uh, there are two ways I I suggest, but probably someone cannot do that. Uh, first one is you can manually put uh, manually to deploy your uh your healing drone like by the Raven, drone. Right? Yeah, the second, I've thought of that, but one. it's very intense intensive. To yeah, do. it's not that worse because especially you if your liberators you clump up. Another another method is a little bit hard. You can use your uh, secret missile to kill the scourge, but it like it requires you to click that, so it's a little bit hard. But that's and really they have sec special. they have revive, so it doesn't. It's not even a guarantee. Just use one, then use another one. <laughs> yeah. Yikes! If you say so. I think I like the command center strategy best. I think if I if I encounter yeah, yeah, that again, I'll just do the command center better. strategy. Anyway, Nova's fine in A. I don't have a problem with A, I just have a problem with how I dealt with it in my game. Rainer, where do we have him? Uh, Rainer, he has spider mines, which are cool. cool. Uh, they're, they're good. Um, if you get a big enough army, it's also good. But until then, it's kind of bad. So bad. you also need to have an, probably like a small force, a, a big enough force to like clear stuff to allow you to put mines there in the first place. And now that mines aren't invincible when they're unburled, um, you need like a lot or else you lose some like along like some of them will blow up but others will get shot down so you need a lot of mines so that means you have to be on top of your macro and uh rainer is susceptible to aoe as usual so like a, a templar that dies will revive with full energy and he'll storm you again yes my goodness so uh i put rainer in c okay how about you herman um i'm leveling up rainer <laughs> now I, I mean like yesterday or last week um like i'm like playing with my friend and they and we play like brutal plus four and we get like revive for a lot of times and uh the first first mine I'm, i was thinking is to use uh spider mines but uh, the the uh the ui of spider mine is kind of weird so um i don't know i don't know it's probably just i don't i don't have enough mines so like i have like 
like some mines for like six silos and uh, they blow up and then they revive but but my mines just stay there and yeah they're stuck because, yeah it's really weird and uh, yeah after a few games i just use hanks and uh, benji's <laughs> yeah <laughs> like if you if i want to do aoe damage <laughs> how do you guys feel about bunkers and yeah bunkers to defend with of course marine side and tanks behind them as an Enemy alternative to, dependent, but yeah, because I think that the, if you're exposing fewer of your marines to storms, the enemies with splash damage will have less of a revive pool to draw from. That's why I thought bunkers might do the there's, trick. There's, there's another thing which uh, the tracks lock your buildings, so it's hard to get like a good that's true line that, of bunkers. That's, that's a good well, point. Yeah, anyway, uh, where do you have him, Herman? Uh, I'm. I think he is a lower C in my mind. Okay, yeah. that works for me. I actually yeah. had him in D, same as Artanis and Hot and Horner, but you guys both say C, so I'll have him in C. Step boy, where do I have him? Um, S. Step boy. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, right. I think he can be uh, S here. <laughs> Hold um, until you have investors, then just just shove more bodies than they can, right? <laughs> Uh, I'm not thinking about investors. Uh, I'm yeah. thinking just about zerglings work. Bailings uh, might work. Ultrasks will probably work. Yeah, zerglings. And so if the AI is like pure ground, you can just. I think lurker is. Lurkers might fine. work. I would. Yeah, lurkers or objects do, like depends on you. And uh, if they're air, use croppers. <laughs> I wouldn't use lurkers personally, but I can see that working. Anyway. Yeah, uh, croppers is really good for anti. How about you, Tutu? Really good. Um, the the plan is pretty simple. You use zerglings to hold. It's just stall time so they don't hit the bots while the e gorb cooldown resets. So once okay. you have e gorbs, it's like a huge burst damage that just wipes them out. And you do that twice because they have two lives and they just die. Yeah. So it's very easy. And uh, I put him in S. Nice. Stukov, where do we have him? Uh, Stukov, enemy comp dependent because uh, there's like, if there are air units, you can kind of pull them down, but I don't know, it's kind of rough. Yes. Zerg is easier to fight because uh, Zerglings, they they get killed by the Diamondback Slime a lot easier, a lot faster yeah. than Zealots and like Marines do. You'll probably want Diamondbacks and then tanks later on. Uh, but enemy comp dependent, you don't want Lore of the Horde. P3 is just not good. I don't it's think it's a good idea. They're just going to keep Feeding. draining you. and you <laughs> you're, know, gonna, you're gonna feed the enemy. P3 is too slow yeah. and kill enemy too slow and they just... P3 is them. about like surviving yeah. long time. Surviving a long time, not killing quickly and yes. you want to kill them Just quickly. Because of all right letter uh, yeah c, c okay how about you herman i also think he is a c tier for me works um, for me just yeah just AI dependent and uh, you just want a uh, diamond bag tanks and uh, you can get liberators if you want yeah. for anti air cool uh, swan where do we have him uh swan yeah mm, he he is a little bit AI dependent in my mind. So if you get like immortals or siege tanks, that's really bad for static defense. Uh, if you're, you're not using static defense, let's say um, Why not base factories for P1, uh, that also works in my mind. I was but, actually just uh, thinking factories. <laughs> Like yeah, you just need to have something to tow them, like uh, like or like you have some ground structures, yeah, ground structures. Uh, like uh, you can build command centers or factories. Just have something to hold, and uh, uh, just die is kind of annoying. Yeah, just like uh, just die plus uh, temp high templars. Like you kill it once, and then it revives, have full full energy, and then it just storms you again. Uh, so that's a little bit bad. But I think. He is a B tier in my mind. How about you, Tutu? Uh, so he has a similar problem with S Carax. It's just he he doesn't deal burst damage. He lasts he outlasts them because he has self healing plus SCV repair plus his turrets have a lot of life. But he doesn't kill them quickly. So uh, unless you get enough wraiths, but it actually takes a while to get wraiths if you're also That's... building like static defense. So uh, I put him in C. Hmm, interesting. So Herman, are you going to make a case for B or are you going to change to C? Uh, C is fine for me. Yeah, <laughs> he should be the brother of Carax. <laughs> all right, yeah. all right. I have him B, but both of you say C, so we'll move to C. Tychus, where do you have him? Yeah. Tychus. Uh, 
I don't think you do anything different from what you normally do. But you might have to, you're like, you might, if you're playing P2, then you're gonna have to um, fight a little longer. But I don't think you do anything that different from you what you might normally do. Do you, um, want, do you want to be P2 here? I used P2. Um, you don't fine. have to be P2. Yeah. Uh, you can use any prestige because they're all good. They're all good. Uh, yeah. So I put him in A, but I can, if someone, if you pick, if you guys put him in S, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. How about you, uh, Herman? I guess, um, yeah, I, I was still suggest using G2 in my mind. Yeah, uh, there's like only one or two comp that you are, that you have trouble with. One is the uh, disruptive artillery, and the, the other one is the, uh, what's that called? The, uh, the, the, the AI has dragoons, and the Vanguard of Iron. Uh, yeah, Vanguard of Iron, yeah. This two is uh, really difficult, so you probably just don't want to face them. Other than this two, it should be fine for P2. All right. Um, so letter. I think he can be S because he only just don't like these two specific AI. Other than these two, he is fine. All right. So all of us say S. Yeah. So let's have him an S. Vorezun, where do we have him? Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Rosen. Uh, AI dependent, definitely. <laughs> yeah. How do you? Uh, how should? Yeah. I? Uh, if the AI is Terran, it's really easy. Very yeah. Easy. If the AI is Terran, it's really easy. But uh, Terran, Terran air, it's still fine because your your uh your your air unit is slow. And uh, but if they're they are not Terran, well, it, it's really hard to kill the the detection unit because they have two lives plus a barrier. Uh, and uh, your DPS is high enough slow because like so you use all your shadow fury and then they revive and then you don't have shadow fury anymore so you probably want to use like some shadow fury first and then you use the other shadow furies if you're using dark templars uh but it's just kind of hard like to like you just need a lot of micros and you need to you need to macro and get like you need to balance your uh your ground and your, your anti-ground and your anti-air so i would say he is like a C tier in my mind. What do you think, Tutu? Um, with against like Terran, she's easily like A because they don't they can't see yeah. her but yeah. against others like against especially zerg against zerg it's just so much more difficult because they are so fast they have they all every ling has extra 100 hp <laughs> or you can't touch them for five seconds either way it's painful they're obs uh, overseers have two lives and your corsairs are trash early uh and uh also the zerglings will just rush the bot which also sucks a Oops. lot uh, so I put her in B, but I don't think C is that crazy, actually. Yeah. Because yeah. I also have other... her in C. Okay. Yeah. All right. She has a lot of CC options, but they're like... It's... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, CC options are really good. Black holes. Uh, she's and, in... Uh, CC word and she's the in... time stop. She's in C tier because she has a lot of CC options. There we go. Zagara, where do we have him? Um... She, uh, so in a war of attrition, you do, I, I remember it last time we had just died on the par and parcel. I used P1, and that's probably because, uh, you can use Scourge to snipe the hybrid. But this yeah. one, if you use P1 and you're not fighting air, you're gonna just You'll have lots of, of juice. like, wasted supply. <laughs> So uh, I don't I don't know if P1 is a good idea here. I don't think it is because yeah, if you don't if you don't kill them, they're gonna keep draining life. And they have barrier. That's another thing. The barrier in the other the part and parcel one, they don't have barrier. They didn't have barrier. But this one they do. And you don't want to waste banelings on barriers. Yes. So uh, I think P3 yeah. is better. And um, I use bio launchers because Yay, they're free damage. <laughs> free damage. Yeah, you put you put them in key locations, and you can see where I put them. You basically Basically put them on like high ground and then you can shoot you lure them into your spine crawlers and then they get hit for free and you don't need to spend any extra money every time you hit them so it's good awesome. uh but that said she's still bad because well meh yeah, yeah she's still not that she's not bad she's still not that good so i put her in c how about you um uh, oh wait we started with we start wait i'm kind of lost how about you, Herman? Uh, yeah, it's um, Zagara. Well, um, I remember I play Zagara uh, with Just Die, and uh, I'm facing an AI composition that has a uh, sentry. So my bidding get a uh, force field, and uh, that's what you get for not making abs. Go. You need abs, yeah, guys. Uh, just a 
a big tip if you are fighting against AI that has um centuries, centuries. Uh, just build one average. <laughs> yeah, to just um break the force fields. Yeah, to just destroy the force field. Yeah. So is there like three AI has centuries? I'm not that sure. Maybe four. I can't remember. Uh, but she, I mean, just the early game. Um, like you, like Zagara, like you use painting brush, and uh, they like if, if you. So if the if the enemy is really close to you, you use painting brush, and uh, they just die once. And uh, if they're if they're far away from you, they probably die twice. So that's the thing I want to say. Uh, overall, she is just not that good. So C tier was fine for me. All right, all that discussion for a C. Yeah. Zeray Tool, where do we have him? Um, Zeray Tool. Well, he has a uh, void templar if you are fighting against hunt, uh, and uh, if you are fighting against air, so uh, stalkers or immortals are fine. And uh, you probably should use uh, the star uh, legion. The the legion has dark archa. Yeah. Um, but if they are uh, zerglings, um, just use the uh, zelot legion. Oh, Rust legion. Uh, yes. Uh, other than that, I think just play normally. But uh, like you're. Early game, you like you need you definitely need units to fight the waves because you like you use to like swing once they revive and uh, yeah just you just need extra like EPS for early game. All right, mm, better. Yeah, I would say you can be S tier in my mind. Yeah. How about you? Tutu? But I'm okay with A. I'm okay with A. How about you, Tutu? Uh, I don't think he's as I mean he's very strong, but I don't think he's as like easy as the other ones. I can respect that. He's, yeah, I don't think he's as easy as like the Haka or Statman, and not as he's he's quite mobile. But you gotta have you gotta like put more prisms in places for the mobility. You don't just get to like summon things without vision, like the Haka can, True. or just run run them around the map as easily. So I put him in A. I think he's still really strong. Okay. Okay. I had I had Zeratul in S, but no problems with A. A is still really good. All right. Uh. Are you gonna make a case for S, Herman, or A is fine? Uh, a is fine. Yeah, I said A is fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where did I drop zero? Here he is. All right. Let's go to rankings. Who's best in S? Statman's easiest. Statman. Stat boy. <laughs> there we go. Statman. Back to where he belongs. Then the Hawk and Tychus. Then the Hawk and Tychus. Cool. Yeah. Who's top of A? Zertul. Zertul. Yeah. He has a nomination for S. Though. Yeah, he was a nomination. For, he was an S candidate. And then who do we have next? Nova. Nova. Then. This two is kind of like hard to discuss because it depends on player skill. If you are really, we'll call it a draw. Use whoever you have, or you, you use yeah. your preferred playstyle. We'll call them a draw. For B, who's better, Arcturus or Abathur? Uh, I think Abathur is better. I actually don't disagree. I was I was wondering why Abathur isn't an A initially. I think once you get your Brutalisks up, once you get your Vipers, it is not a problem. That I agree it with. Just you. takes time to get there. Just takes time to get there. All right. Who's best in C? Kerrigan? Kerrigan. Kerrigan's good. Yeah. And then Carax? Yeah, I think Kerrigan and Carax is fine. All right. Okay. And after that, who's next? Oh. Hmm. Uh, Vor oh. Vorzun? Swan? Oh. Vorzun is B here, right? Or we put Vorzun in C, right? Yeah. Yeah. She was oh, put okay. to C because of Air. the other races. Oh, yeah, other races, yeah. Okay. Uh, I saw we talked about the hard control thing. Yeah, we did. <laughs> but okay. still, okay. Yeah. I okay, think, okay. okay. Uh, Is Stukov so or Rainer bottom of C? Or the the two of them are bottom of C alongside Zagara? They're, yeah. This three are not that good, though. Um, but I think Zagara do just fine compared to Zagara does fine. This all right, so Rainer so, and Stukov, like, bottom of C. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we have Ra we have Kerrigan, Karax, Swan, Vorzun, Zagara, Rainer, Stukov. Should I switch any of yes. those, or is it correctly ordered? Uh, I think probably Stukov do does better than Rainer. All right. But just obviously. just barely. Yeah. All right. So Stukov yeah. then Rainer. All right. So D tier, who's the least bad between Artanis and Han and Horner? I think Han Horner's better. Okay. All right. Because so... Han Horner can hit them before they Dying. get close. <laughs> yes. All right. That's true. All right. So that's our tier list. Oh wait, do we have combinations of B, C, and D tiers that would be better than one S tier? No. W weren't we talking <laughs> about it earlier? Uh... Han and Horner and Artanis. 
I, I think it's still rather Arhan have. Arhan is still use P, not non P three though. If you want to like. Oh, to Garden have, Shell. Let the Reapers who have the Guardian Shell. Oh, yeah. Zagara and our Zagara and Artanis are a really good combo. I would say, I would think. There's Especially... one more thing Zagara's good with is that Zagara has a lot of stuff when the first wave hits. Yes. Who That's else? Uh... Abathur and Kerrigan because Abathur is great anti air and Kerrigan's only weakness is air. Mm hmm. Yes. Uh, I never tried uh like Absur P two plus uh Kerrigan P one and let Absur use the uh, uh uh wait what's that called I just yeah yeah host yeah storm host yeah uh yeah because the storm host just attacks really fast but I'm not sure if they're good here yeah okay yeah I think that's fine that's that's enough synergies for this week all right guys yeah we, we could. Yes, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to mention that if you're like Abyssal plus Abyssal plus Kerrigan P1, Abyssal can still build a uh, Nidus. Oh, forms. yeah. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, that's it, really yeah, neat. Abyssal can still use uh, Omega Worm. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Abyssal and Kerrigan, that'd be a great combo. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, watch Herman and Tutu's channels. I will link them down below, and I will see you guys next time.